PFF College had James Pierce Jr., one of 15 players to reach 23 miles an hour on a single play last season. And he did that at 6'5", 242 pounds. So I think Dave and I are kind of making the case, could James Pierce be the most freakishly gifted athlete in Tennessee history? When you ask that question, uh, there are three that, that come to mind for me. Uh, one of them is Dale Carter. Uh, Dale Carter was a terrific athlete. Uh, he had to get lined up sometimes by another safety <laughs> to tell him what to do. But my gosh, I thought he was an incredible athlete. There was another one that was like a four sports star in high school that was a great athlete, and it was Carl Pickens. Mm -hmm. And there's another one that I think of that uh, actually told me recently that track was his favorite sport, and he wished he had pursued the decathlon in college, and that's Heath Shuler. Mm -hmm. Those three really come to mind as uh, freakish athletes. Uh, who could do just a lot of things, run, jump. They were fast. They, um, they were strong. Uh, and that, they also ended up being great football players as well. But, but those three immediately come to mind for me. I know Heath said that on your – and I do want you to promote what you're doing with, with Paige. I know Heath said that, but I may be misremembering, but I think Mike Strange said, you know, Heath Shuler would have been a great decathlete. And then I mentioned it to Heath, and he said I hadn't thought about that. But that's been about 15 years ago, so I don't know if maybe he's right. I think he would be a great decathlete, but I don't know if he's remembering that um, exactly the way it happened. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Jimmy. You, you had that delineation where you had three right off the top. Would you have Pierce in that discussion, or is it too early? Um, I, given the fact that he ran 23 miles an hour on that frame, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of hard to get away from. If I were to think of somebody that was at a similar position that I thought was pretty freakish, I might go Leonard Little in mm -hmm. that regard. Uh, Little was a terrific pass rusher. I never thought they should have moved in middle linebacker, but he was a great pass rusher and had a very good NFL career. Um, uh, I would, I would, uh, I would certainly have to consider Pierce in that group of the best that I've seen. I would like to see him. I mean, and we're just talking athletically, so it doesn't matter if he has ten sacks again this year. We're just talking about somebody that's a freak athlete. He, he would rank uh, really high on my list of the freak athletes at Tennessee. That's funny you bring that name up. Let me tell you the guy that comes up when I ask former players about James Pierce. Fifteen seconds from Ray Barner Ford. Big Ben 4x4, 29743. A 2024 T250 low roof cargo van, 51955. 24 model Ford F 150, 4x4 crew cab, 46929. Ray Warner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Jimmy, it is Leonard Little. And you know how players are. They don't just throw around all time legends mm -hmm. like that. Um, Caleb, when I mentioned you as Leonard Little, your eyes kind of got big, but that was the comparison that players that played with Leonard Little. I've made between James Pierce and Leonard Little. For context on Leonard Little, and guys, I was very young at the time. I was just getting into college football, so I can't sit there and pretend that I was, you know, able to break down film like I can now, but I was nine. Um, but I, I do look at numbers, and I know, Jimmy, what you said. I know what Dave said, and I know actually what Fred White has said, and they've all lamented Leonard Little moving to middle linebacker in that 97 season, and they thought it was a huge mistake. But that year... He was the third down pass rusher. So they put him on the end on third downs. And just, uh, just as an edge rusher, for part of the time, one third of the time, he still managed to get eight and a half sacks that year. That's Jimmy, that, is the, that is the craziest part. I remember him <laughs> playing middle linebacker and thinking he should play defensive end. But he ain't bad at middle linebacker <laughs> either. No, what I think they – I think what they did, in my opinion, was they took a great pass rusher and made him a good middle linebacker. I would take a great pass rusher over a good middle linebacker. And so that, that was my distinction on that. So uh, he might have had 16 sacks if he had played defensive end the whole time. Maybe more. I don't know. But it, he was almost unblockable as a pass rusher. So I – yeah, I've, I've got a lot of I've got a high regard for Leonard Little. Here's the other thing too about talking about freakish athletes. I lean a little bit in this direction. Maybe I'm the only one, 
But I know there are some people that are athletically gifted in ways. But but when I look at a Heath Shuler or a, or a Carl Pickens, Heath Shuler was a 6'10 high jumper. He was also a great baseball player. Mm-hmm. Carl Pickens was a very good baseball player. He was a seven foot high jumper. They excel, and he was a very good basketball player. They excelled in other sports, which kind of I give them a little bit of the benefit. If you're a multi sport athlete, not just you played it, but you were very good or all state level type, I give you a little bit more uh, of an advantage as a great athlete or a freak athlete. No, I, I like that. It is interesting to me you pick two defensive backs. When, and it's on our poll question. We want you to vote on the YouTube channel. You pick Dell Carter and Carl Pickens. It's pretty rare to have two defensive backs as the most elite athletes. Now, that is before my time. To update the poll question, 42% say Carl Pickens, 25% say James Pierce, 17% apiece say Dell Carter and Heath Schuler. So what was it about uh, uh, Pickens and and, and Dell Carter, your thoughts? So, uh, Pickens ended up being a, a fantastic player in the NFL wide receiver, but came in, if correct me if I'm wrong, as a defensive back, right? Well, no, he, he came in as a receiver. Okay. And, and what happened was Tennessee's secondary was so bad in 1989, okay. they moved him to defensive back for the last half of that season. He, but he was a defensive MVP of the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> he made a great end zone interception <laughs> to help him win that. Right. But he also got ticked off when he was moved to safety because he didn't play as many snaps at receiver. So he, he got mad at the coaching staff over that move. Um, so, But anyway, uh, what's up? Dale Carter could run and jump. He was an incredible athlete. Uh, I, I, and to be honest with you, I don't know how good he was in other sports. But I, I would think that he would probably be very good in some other sports if he had attempted them. I know that Carl Pickens was very good in baseball and basketball, obviously in football, in track, a tremendous all-around athlete. He did. He was said to not have great speed. Dave, I never saw anybody catch him from behind. Mm-mm. I think it, my theory is he was a long strider. And sometimes we look at long striders as slower, but they're really not. Well, when Jerry Rice so- came out of Mississippi Valley State, and by the way, I actually covered him in college in one game. Um, he was said they were questioning his speed. Did anybody catch him from behind? So yeah. I think there's a game speed versus a clock speed. And I think Pickens had great game speed. He was also a good punt returner or kickoff. Whatever you wanted to do with him, he could do it. Uh, and um, and then with Heath Shuler's all around athletic ability. And he was um he was a tremendous runner. I think he could have played tailback at Tennessee. If they had moved into that position. Caleb, the funny part is that I, I misremembered it, how back then an elite athlete, you could just throw on the other side of the ball because you needed help. Everything's so specialized now. Caleb, I'm not sure you could pull that off, no matter how good of an athlete you are. No, probably not. I mean, it's very rare. I guess Colorado's doing it with Travis Hunter right now. Um, but I, they started mm-hmm. to pay for it down the stretch. It is funny that Jimmy mentions Carl Pickens and Dale Carter. Because we all know Alvin Harper was very fast. And now I go back and think of those final majors teams where Fulmer was the offensive coordinator. Jimmy, the more I hear talk about it, it's almost disappointing that they didn't win a national title because those teams were loaded with talent at that time, weren't they? Yes, they were. 90, 91? Oh, yeah. A- absolutely. And and they they should have won more games than they did. They, they did have national championship capabilities. 1990, if you remember opening that season, uh, they could have, should have beat Colorado. And Colorado went on to win the national championship. That ended up being a tie game in Anaheim. And um the Eric B. Enemy game, was it? Or was he yes. hurt? It was Mike Pritchard. I'm uh, Pritchard, about. Pritchard was a guy that ran for like 200 yards. He was a wide receiver that they moved to running back. And B. Enemy uh, was hurt? Is that I right? The enemy was hurt. I, I'm not 100%. Uh, but I, Pritchard was a guy that came in and, and played well. And Tennessee, at the very end of that game, if you guys remember, they ran a draw play to Webb trying to get about eight or 10 yards and then kick a field goal, well, he gained more yards and he kept running downfield and ran the clock out. So they didn't get a chance to kick the field goal, <laughs> which, which is kind of an interesting situation. But, uh, yeah, so Col- Tennessee was every bit as good as Colorado, which won the national championship that year. Um, in, in 91, 92, Tennessee had extraordinary athletes and probably should have won more games than they did. Of course, we know the 92 season, that's one in which uh, majors ended up with a, a heart issue in August. Actually had a heart attack, 
Fulmer coached the first three games. Majors came back. There was kind of an internal revolt. They ended up losing three games in a row. Never should have lost three in a row. And uh, it cost them. He should have said the only game they would have lost would have been maybe Alabama, and they'd have been in the national championship hunt that year if uh, if Majors had not come back. No, no I, I, absolutely. That, that team, to me, always seemed to stumble in one game they shouldn't. <laughs> 